Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith and I want to talk about technology today uh, based on this article I saw in The Economist. Now you might think perhaps I'm going to address the prophesied conflict uh, between Apple and Windows uh, and I'm not. You know we're all about prophecy here. But this did catch my attention. I do like technology. I'm fascinated by computing, frankly in particular artificial intelligence. And this is an article from The Economist on March 12th, uh, 2016. The title was After Moore's Law, The Future of Computing. Uh, the subtitle says the era of predictable improvement in computer hardware is ending what comes next. Now you may not be familiar with Moore's Law and they try to describe what Moore's Law is. It's more a rule of thumb. It was an idea. Uh, sometimes it's played a little too strictly. Uh, I, actually I think one of our Tomorrow's World uh, magazines, we we're going to put a graphic about Moore's Law in there. I can't remember now if we actually had that. Uh, but the, na the name of the gentleman was Gordon Moore and they summarize it here in the Economist article. It says according to his rule of thumb known as Moore's Law, Processing power doubles roughly every two years as smaller transistors are packed ever more tightly into silicon wafers, boosting performance and reducing costs. Uh, so essentially saying how computer, powering, uh, computer power since the 70s, every two years or so, it's just doubled. It's gotten cheaper and it's gotten faster. You might think computers are expensive now, but the computers that we carry in our pockets today would have been unthinkable prices in the past, not to mention simply technologically unachievable. Uh, it says the impact of Moore's Law is visible all around us. Today, three billion people carry smartphones in their pockets. Each one is more powerful than a room-sized supercomputer from the 1980s. Countless industries have been upended by digital disruption. Abundant computing power has even slowed nuclear tests because atomic weapons are more easily tested using simulation, ex sorry, simulated explosions rather than real ones. Moore's Law has become a cultural trope. People inside and outside Silicon Valley expect technology to get better every year. Uh, and I would say I do. I imagine you, many of you probably do as well. But they note, but now after five decades, the end of Moore's Law is in sight. And essentially what they're saying is we are really getting uh, to a limit of how small we can make a, you know, quote unquote transistor, uh, you know, how small we can make these chips and what we can produce out of them. But they don't suggest that that's the end of improvements in computing, but rather that improvements will begin to focus on other areas. And they focus on three. Uh, the first is software the actual programming that we put in computers. And they make a point, you may have actually read about this, where the, uh, uh, one of the world's Go champions, Go being this particular game played with stones that is simple, but in, at the same time incredibly complex for the number of moves it has. The, the champion in Go was beaten by a computer. Now why is this remarkable? Because unlike in chess games where computers can win, the variations in chess, as vast as they are in terms of possibilities, it's not within the realm, it's not outside of the realm of a computer to be able to project. And so just by hard power, crunching numbers, a computer can do well at chess. Go is a different matter. It involves a different way of thinking. You can't actually calculate all the probabilities of all the moves. And it was a major advance for a computer to be able to beat a human master at that game. So the first they say is software. Secondly, they mentioned progress in the cloud. That is, all this data being uploaded and such and dealing with things in this, not on your computer per se, but sort of in this distributed computer, if you will, kind of one way to think about it, all over the world. Uh, if you're having visions of Skynet in your head, yeah, I, I won't address those right now, but I don't blame you. And then the third was in new computing architectures, just a completely fundamentally new way to do computing. They talk about quantum computing and those kinds of leaps and bounds. The theme really is that things are changing. It's not a matter of simply computing more and computing it faster. Rather, we're discovering radically different ways of doing things with computers. And it really is changing everything. Uh, in a sense, we're teaching computers to think in a certain kind of way that they can think that's different than the way we do. And it's impacting our lives in ways we don't even know right now. It's so behind the scenes. There are computers going through legal briefs now 
because they can examine more legal briefs than a team of human lawyers. There are computers that are making patient diagnoses now, uh, such as the Watson uh, computer, that is doing a better job in many cases of diagnosing patient ailments uh, than the nurses and doctors who visit them. Uh, it is really becoming absolutely radically different. And I guess here's what I want to leave you with for the webcast. Way back before the Tower of Babel, when mankind had one voice and was not uh, divvied up in terms of our languages, God made a point in Genesis 11 and verse 6. He said, nothing that they, that is mankind, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. And I don't know about you, really, what do you think about that? I've seen the imagination of mankind unleashed in small ways throughout history. We all have, and it isn't always the greatest thing. Moore's law may be coming to an end, but if we think the advances in computing power is ending, we are wrong. We don't realize how we are surrounded by the power of computing constantly and in our pockets, on our wrists, everywhere. And as our ability to do things grows through these different kinds of machine thinking, different kinds of architectures, putting all this data together, I just want to ask you, how do you think mankind is going to increasingly use this power? I admit I have my reservations, and I believe the Bible justifies a little bit of paranoia. Uh, you know, if you're watching this webcast on Facebook, Feel free and comment in the comments down at the bottom in terms of what you think mankind will do with increasing computing power. And regardless, I do hope you'll check us out at tomorrowsworld.org for all the other resources that we have available.